It's kind of strange, isn't it, that even though 71% of Earth's surface is covered by oceans, we still have to talk about water shortages. The main reason for this is that seawater in the world's oceans contains, on average, about 3.5% salt, which means there's roughly 35 grams of salt dissolved in every liter of water. Because salt, which is a non-volatile solid, is dissolved in seawater, that water simply isn't suitable for drinking or growing plants. For water to be safe and ideal for drinking, the salt content needs to be somewhere between 0.2 and 0.4 grams per liter, which is about 0.02 to 0.04 percent, and the upper limit is generally considered to be 1 gram per liter. When we do the math, we find that only about 2.5 percent of all the water on Earth is fresh water that's actually usable by humans. And to make things even more difficult, around 69% of all that fresh water is locked away in glaciers in Antarctica, the Arctic, and Greenland. On top of that, freshwater resources are extremely unevenly distributed across the world, and there are already countries where a ton of water costs more than a ton of oil. Iran is one of those countries, and like many others in Southwest Asia, it's facing a serious crisis when it comes to both drinking water and irrigation for farming. Hello everyone! At the same time, Iran's coastal regions are bordered by the Caspian Sea in the north and to the south by the Persian Gulf and the Gulf of Oman, which are all part of the Indian Ocean. So it's really no surprise that Iran has found itself facing the challenge of turning seawater into usable fresh water. Welcome to our channel everyone! Alright, let's get started! Israel's Technology as a Model to Follow Iran and Israel may be bitter political enemies, but they actually share a surprising number of the same problems. One of the biggest ones they both face is a serious shortage of fresh, usable water. The method Israel used to tackle this crisis turned out to be so effective that it absolutely inspired Iran to consider doing something similar. In Israel, an impressive 85% of all domestic and industrial water use is covered by seawater desalination systems that draw water straight from the Mediterranean Sea. These desalination plants use reverse osmosis membranes, a technology that requires far less energy than other methods used for turning seawater into fresh water. Israel pumps water from a system of massive desalination plants built along the Mediterranean coast, each capable of processing between 24 and 40 billion gallons of seawater per year. That water is sent to the Sea of Galilee, and by doing so, the country has essentially saved its entire water supply system, serving the most densely populated regions. The reason that was so critical is because the original national water system, built back in 1964, relied on drawing fresh water directly from the Sea of Galilee, which gradually became shallower over time and was in danger of drying up completely. But by switching to desalinated seawater from the Mediterranean, Israel was able to eliminate that threat once and for all. Iran should definitely take a page out of Israel's book when it comes to making smart and efficient use of desalinated water. In Israel's water supply system, the total loss of water is kept down to just 3%, which is remarkably low. By comparison, the United Kingdom loses about 30% of its fresh water, Bulgaria loses 50%, and in Romania, the loss skyrockets to 70%. Doesn't that make you think it's time to start learning from Israel? There's also a lot Iran could learn from Israel when it comes to managing underground water resources. For example, in Iran's capital, Tehran, so much groundwater has been pumped out to meet the city's needs that the ground is now sinking by about 10 inches every year, creating a growing risk of massive disaster. Israel went through a similar situation in the past, but they've drastically reduced their reliance on groundwater and have shifted much of their supply to desalinated seawater instead. Iran's Water Crisis but when it comes to water issues, Iran's situation is far more severe than Israel's. Above all else, Iran is facing a massive shortage of fresh water on a nationwide scale. To help paint a clearer picture, let's take a look at some photos showing the current state of the Amir Kabir Dam. This dam is located about 39 miles outside of Tehran, and water from its pipelines is used to supply both the capital city and the surrounding farmland. 
At first glance, the dam lake looks beautifully green, blending perfectly with the clear blue sky. But when you shift your eyes closer to the front edge of the lake, you'll notice that the water level has dropped several feet. That's because rainfall has dropped dramatically, plunging by 21% in just the last year alone. According to the head of Iran's water resources management company, the total amount of water flowing into Iran's dams in 2025 dropped 33% compared to the previous year. As a result, not only has the reservoir at the Amir Kabir Dam dropped, but the ones at the Latian, Lar, and Zayandarud dams have also fallen, and all of them are among the country's most important dams. And this crisis isn't just because of reduced rainfall. Wasteful water usage, the depletion of underground aquifers, and climate change are all playing major roles in making things worse. While the amount of water flowing from natural sources keeps going down year after year, the country's overall water consumption just keeps rising. One of the biggest reasons for this spike in demand is that Iran's population has nearly quadrupled. In the last 60 years, Iran's population surged from 25 million in 1966 to about 90 million by 2025. Most likely, the rapid expansion of industry has also contributed just as much to the country's growing water consumption. In recent years, the water crisis has reached a truly dangerous tipping point. It's a threat that not only puts the lives of millions of Iranians at risk, but could also seriously destabilize the country's economy and political structure. How Iran Found a Solution to Its Water Crisis As you've just seen, Iran was in desperate need of an immediate way out of this escalating crisis. At first, the country tried reaching out to its neighbors for help, hoping to import water. But that plan didn't work out. Iran attempted to gain access to water from the Amu Darya River through Turkmenistan, but no agreement could be reached. That's because several surrounding countries were already drawing water from that river. And on top of that, Afghanistan is preparing to join them soon and is currently building a canal to extract water from the same river. Another plan, which involved buying water from Pakistan, where the Indus River still carries a healthy flow, also ended in failure. In the end, Iran had no choice but to rely on its own strength and natural resources. The Iranian government concluded that its only real option was to start using water from the Persian Gulf and the Gulf of Oman. But seawater from the Persian Gulf and the Gulf of Oman is full of salt and is completely unusable in its raw form. These hot southern seas have extremely high salinity levels, with as much as 40 to 41 grams of salt per liter, which is even saltier than the global ocean average. Fortunately, there are industrial desalination systems that, while energy intensive, can still purify this kind of seawater effectively. Countries like Israel and those across the Arabian Peninsula have already been using these systems successfully. After carefully weighing all the pros and cons, the Iranian government decided to move forward with building several powerful desalination plants along the coasts of the Persian Gulf and the Gulf of Oman. From there, a massive network of irrigation canals and pipelines, stretching for thousands of miles, would carry the water across the country. The first step was laying a giant water pipeline starting from the Strait of Hormuz, which connects the Persian Gulf to the Gulf of Oman. The desalinated water from that pipeline is delivered to the provinces of Hormozgan, Kerman, and Yazd. This transport corridor spans a total of 513 miles and can deliver up to 48 billion gallons of fresh water every year. Out of that, around 13 billion gallons go to Hormozgan, while the remaining 34 billion gallons are used as industrial water in Kerman and Yazd. These provinces are home to major copper refineries that process raw material extracted from the largest copper reserves in the world. Thanks to this water transport corridor, groundwater and dam reservoirs are no longer needed for industrial use. The pipeline was fully completed and became operational in November 2020, with the Iranian government spending a total of $3.88 billion on the project. After this successful launch, the Iranian government decided to keep expanding this massive infrastructure effort. That's because, even with this 513-mile pipeline in place, the water shortage problem still wasn't fully solved. So, construction began on a brand new branch pipeline that would run parallel to the main line already in operation. 
this second pipeline stretches about 963 miles and will be capable of supplying 53 billion gallons of fresh water every year. The second branch is expected to begin operating as early as 2025. At the same time, in 2023, construction started on yet another water route to accompany this second branch. This new corridor begins at the Gulf of Oman, travels east of the original pipeline, crosses through the same provinces and continues north to reach Isfahan and Sistan and Ambalushistan. Of all the regions affected, the water crisis is most visible in Isfahan province. In fact, one-third of Isfahan's total land area is covered in true desert. This single province alone holds 10% of all Iran's desert regions. That's why water in this part of the country is literally worth its weight in gold. And in this case, that's not just a figure of speech, it's the absolute truth. Delivering desalinated water to Ifsahan and Sistan and Baluchistan is one of the most expensive undertakings Iran has ever faced. This 565-mile pipeline project is expected to cost a total of $8.3 billion. But once it's completed, the cities of Isfahan, Kerman, Yazd, and Hormozgan will have their water supply problems completely solved. On top of that, the region's agriculture and growing industrial sectors will gain access to much more water. When the entire project is finished, it's expected that 74 billion gallons of desalinated water will be delivered each year to Iran's eastern provinces. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again very soon. Take care.